All right, good evening, everybody, to episode number 43 of Beyond the Court. Uh, Leo, how are you, my friend? Uh, unfortunately, we know via the great social media, unfortunately, that you have uh, tested positive for COVID. How are you feeling? Thank you, Suds. Great to be here. Uh, thanks for inviting me back. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, first of all, thank you. Thank everybody um, that has called, messaged, uh, you know, my family, uh, you guys know who you are. I wish I could name every one of you, but thank you guys so much for uh, reaching out and offering all kinds of suggestions and well wishes and prayers. So I love you guys. It, it made me feel really good. Um, I'm, it, it's about day seven. And uh, believe it or not, today is really kind of the first day that I think I've started to just get to feeling better, you know? Um, so uh, if you, if you, you know, if you feel sick, go get tested. That's all I, that's all I can say. Uh, I know some friends that tested negative, so uh, that's awesome. But uh, unfortunately, I tested positive. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, back on the mend and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here tonight. We got a big show. We got a big guest, a um, lot of questions, a uh, lot of things out on, like you said, the social media, which is, you know, how people find out stuff and people were at the US Open. So uh, yeah, what do you think? Are you, are you ready? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm ready. I mean, you know, I, I really, you know, thank you to Scotty Mac for being able to, as always, facilitate this back there. But, um, you know, it's important. It's definitely a big show. You know, this is important. It, it matters to racquetball. Um, you know, hopefully we can all listen. You know, hopefully we'll do less commenting, less, uh, you know, let's just try to hear the human side of it. And Leo, I appreciate you taking on this role because we did speak offline and it is important. I feel that, you know, you uh, take, take the lead on this, you know, and kind of go at it from a, you know, from a fan's perspective, uh, obviously we're all pretty close and personal and, and maybe we know some more things or less things, but we're here to, for Kane to be able to communicate to the fans and to the sport and, and let him talk about what, what's happening, what's gone on. And hopefully, you know, hopefully everybody hears that and, and come up with, with how you feel. And hopefully it's not going to be, uh, you know, it's not always unicorns and rainbows or, or ice cream sundaes, right? So let's see what it is. Leo, it's, it's now you're beyond the court. Go ahead, buddy. Well, before we bring uh, our, our guest in tonight, um, I do want to say just one quick thing that I think even coming off of the U.S. Open and uh, my history in the game, um, you know, working at a 10 court racquetball club, putting over 200 tournaments, um, uh, you know, from coaching to teaching, I think it's pretty evident that, you know, I, I adore, I love, and I, uh, I, you know, racquetball has done so much for me. So I love the sport. I love everything about it. I love the men, I love the women, I love the juniors, I love the state. Uh, I served the executive vice president of USA racquetball. So I just want to make that perfectly clear too, that, you know, um, and being on this type of a platform, it allows anyone, I, from what I've seen, to come in here and just speak. And sometimes things, like you say, there aren't all the, the best things in the world. So, you know, uh, thank you for inviting me because uh, you're right. We're going to bring in Kane and we're going to hear from him. And he can let the fans know. Uh, there's a lot of rumors on the Internet. I've got some questions that uh, I'll be asking him. We went through the comments. We got on these pages and we looked at these comments and we saw people that were making false rumors. Uh, so hopefully Kane will uh, address those tonight and we can put a lot of stuff to rest. And then hopefully we'll take some more questions tonight in the chat. So uh, without further ado, uh, Scotty Mack, if you've got Kane uh, in the lobby and ready to go, let's, let's bring in Kane. Kane, are you there? I'm here, I'm here. Hey, I just love coming, that uh, Yeah. Thank you. Hold on, hold on. I want to get. <laughs> is it part I of the. Get where I see everybody. The there we go. Hey, I, Kane, I, thanks I, for... I, I didn't get the memo. I have mine. I don't want <laughs> to go watch at night. You got the wristband on. A little That's love right there. Good enough. Well, hey, uh, Kane, thanks for coming on tonight. Um, I'm just going to uh, just jump right in uh, to the show. Um, hopefully, we can kind of maybe start with the most recent uh, news that came out of the U.S. Open. There was, a, there was a lot of people that were not there. There were a lot of people that were watching online or hearing rumors. Um, and then there were some people that were there but didn't actually know what happened. 
Um, mm -hmm. There were some rumors that maybe Sudsy was associated with uh, you forfeiting out of the tournament because of uh, whatever happened in y'all's match. Um, there was all these other rumors floating around also that there were threats made to people there on court side. So um, do you think that's a fair place for us to start with this right now is the most recent reason and everything that transpired at the U.S. Open? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, everybody wants to know, uh, you know, what led to the decision. But um, I think that, you know, we ask that in maybe a minute here. I think that we take a second and uh, we recognize uh, Daniel De La Rosa. Uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, obviously we're competitors and obviously he's fighting for the number one spot. Um, however, uh, you know, I mean, I, I got to say that uh, I've been in Daniel's spot where I've won tournaments and people have tried to justify someone not playing or um, something like that. And so my, my, from, from me uh, to the racquetball world, um, you know, congratulations to De La Rosa. Uh, he has no control over um, what's put in front of him. And uh, I made my decision and he has no control over that. And so I think that, you know, we need to embrace him as the champion. Um, as a matter of fact, I actually have one little uh, shot here for De La Rosa. So welcome, <laughs> welcome to the club. Welcome to the club, Daniel. You know, um, cheers, no, uh, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no hate here from from my side. Uh, you know, I think that uh, you know, again, he has no control over it. So I'd like I'd like people to embrace him as the U.S. Open champion, like they did for so many years. Um, and, you know, so I think that's important. Um, I think that let's acknowledge the fact that you know I didn't get to say thank you to Doug and thank you to everybody. Um, you know that made it possible for me to win 15. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate that I, I won more than half of the U.S. Opens that are out there. And I'm very fortunate, I'm very blessed uh, to, to do that and be able to, um, through injury and through whatever else was happening through the years of me winning them, uh, being able to come out on top. I'm, I'm honored for that. And uh, um, so, you know, the people behind the scenes that make it happen, um, anywhere from the people that put up the court to the people that play the music, to the people that take down the court, to the people that help seat people, you know, thank you very much. I've established a lot of relationships just through that in general. And, uh, you know, for that, I'll ever, you know, I'll forever be grateful. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to take a second to clear the air on that. I'm, I'm proud of Daniel. Um, I, I, uh, I don't hold any grudge or say, you know, oh, well, if I was playing, you know, I have my own opinion of it, obviously. And, and uh, you know, obviously, I believe that I would have won the tournament, but that's nor here nor there. And uh, we need to embrace the champion. And that's Daniel. That, that's, well said. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, well said, because, you know, uh, the record speaks for itself. And uh, despite all that, um, I mean, the chat's already blowing up. People, they, they want to know. They want to know what happened. That was big news. Um, it wasn't shared with the fans until uh, next thing you know, they were on the show court with two stools and Doug and uh, I think Eddie Meredith or Jim Heiser were talking about how the U.S. Open came about. So, you know, for you to tell everyone what you – just told us about knowing what it takes to 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 be at that U.S. Open. I mean, you've been there for so many years. How tough is that? And how tough was the decision? And and you know, what do you want to say about it? Yeah. So uh, you know, I, I you know, I, I heard a lot of different theories as to what happened and and all that. And um, you know, it's it's hard. It's not an easy decision. I, I don't even think I slept all night, really. Uh, you know, Suds can attest to this. I was texting him throughout the night, and <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, you know, this wasn't an easy decision. I literally, um, I, I I took everything that I accomplished in my twenty some years, and uh, you know, I just, I don't know, I just something I don't believe in. I don't, I don't believe in how things were handled and, and uh, I, I, I don't even like the situation really I'm in, to be honest with you. Um, but I got to stand up for what I believe in and, and uh, it's a tough situation. I don't think people realize, um, you know, 
how much racquetball means to me and, and, you know, just how long it's been a part of my life. And so, um, you know, it wasn't something that I just woke up and said, you know what, I, I just, I don't care about anything else. And, you know, who cares about everybody else? And, and uh, you know, this wasn't a, an easy decision. Um, with that being said, um, let's get right into what happened. Um, as everybody knows, I hadn't played for 19 months. Um, I went to Chicago and only played uh, doubles based on, uh, you know, a couple of reasons. Uh, obviously, one, I haven't played for so long, and I didn't want to just jump in and play nine <laughs> matches in three days. And and a part of that was my sponsorship deal with Prokenix and not having one. Um, you know, uh, I get to the tournament and uh, not one person actually. There was one actually person from the from the IRT that actually walked up to me and he just gave me a little fist and that was it. Not one other person from the IRT after 19 months of being um, away and still being the number one player, not one person walked up to me from the IRT. So obviously that's a little discouraging because I, I was excited to get back on the court. And uh, really, it didn't really seem like they were really too excited that I was there, unfortunately. So that was a little tough. Um, so I get to the US Open, I get there early um on tuesday i'm practicing and i get approached by uh one of the presidents or you know i'm I, to be honest with you unfortunately i don't really know anybody's true position at the irt unfortunately um what i assume is one of the presidents one of the vice president's owners and he says to me um that he has a situation that's come up and he would like my opinion on how to deal with the situation. I said, all right. I had no idea um, what he was going to say. And he ended up uh, saying that uh, before, I don't know, for people that maybe don't know, um, before I left for the U.S. Open, um, my girlfriend, Allie, she put together a little party for me and my friends and my racquetball friends and uh and a little going away party, kind of just, you know, saying good luck, kick some butt, you know, kind of thing or whatever. And so um, the president that I was talking to or vice president that I was talking to at the time mentions that video um, that Ali posted and I uh, posted on my um, athlete page. And uh, he said that uh, after that video was posted that he had had numerous calls uh, from other players um, questioning a conflict of interest between Scott and I um, and the fact that Scott was at my party um, and uh, you know obviously I had nothing to do with that personally that had everything to do with my girlfriend Allie she's the one that invited Jody and all the guys I play racquetball with and and uh, so I, I asked, I said, well, I still don't understand what, what do you, you know, what, what do you, what are you asking me? And he's like, well, how do you think that I should handle it? And I said, well, you know, in, in obviously a little bit different words, I said, I said, I, I think that you need to call all those guys back and uh, tell them to be a little bit more professional. Um, I don't think you should entertain this conversation. Uh, what I don't understand is that when I was playing all the time on tour um, and we had a regular, you know, we had regular tournaments and we were at a regular schedule. Um, Scott's been playing racquetball with me for about five or six years and that's never ever <laughs> come up, nor has it ever been mentioned. And uh, I find it odd that 19 months later I come back and I'm at the U S open and literally 24 hours after I'm there, I get approached by this conversation and this I get with this conversation. And so um, I basically told him that I would call those players back and tell them to grow up and be professional. And I said, to be honest with you, I wouldn't even entertain it. And if it's that big of a deal, I would say that um, just remove Scott, have someone else ref me. And uh that was, uh, that was, you know, kind of the, the gist of the conversation. That was, that was about it. Was that in person or via text? That was in person, in person. At the U.S. Open? By the sound booth uh, at the U.S. Open there over on the side near where the sound booth is. 
So just you and one other IRT representative. Correct. Correct. So then going forward. So I, I pretty much, you know, I thought it was, I thought it was kind of, that was it. Right. And so um, now again, right. Like I want to make it clear that this specific situation isn't the be all end all of why this ended up coming to fruition of happening. I mean, there's other things that we'll probably get into and talk to talk about here that, you know, lead to this. But so um, I go, Suds and I play Landa and, and, and Murray. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people, right, in their time of knowing racquetball, haven't seen me lose a lot. I get that. Um, but I'm a pretty gracious loser. I don't, I'm okay with losing. I mean, I, I, I am. And uh, anybody that's been around the sport long enough, I mean, knows that. And so, um, but there was something about that match that I just was weird to me. And, you know, I, I, even during the match, I had mentioned to, mentioned to Suds a couple of times, I was like, something just doesn't feel right. I'm like, something feels weird. And so, you know, again, I've been part of tens of thousands of matches, okay? And I don't ever remember a match where I really walked off the court thinking to myself, this is weird. Like, it just has a weird feeling. It has a weird vibe. It has a weird feeling. And as a matter of fact, what a lot of people don't even understand is that, and I go back to the losing part, Suds and I actually had a conversation about me and him actually not playing the doubles because Suds and Suds was the one that brought it up and said, you're here to win singles. You're here to make a statement. If this is going to affect your singles in any way, let's not even get on the court. So this wasn't a matter of Suds and I like not wanting to lose. Like, yeah, we're going to go out there. We're going to compete. We're going to give it all. But there was an understanding that singles was why I was there. Right. So we come off the court and, you know, in, in the middle of the match, I don't know if anybody noticed, but in the middle of the match, I actually asked for the president of the IRT. Um, he was, that person was nowhere to be found. And I was told that, you know, get back in the court and play. And I said, I want to go, you know, I want to speak to the, the president because it's something just felt a little odd. So whatever, we kind of drop that and we continue to play, get off the court after, after losing. And, you know, I'm sitting there and, you know, I hope you're okay with me saying this, Suds, but Suds sat there and goes, something just felt weird about that match. There was a vibe about it that just seemed a little, I don't even know. I don't even know. We, we, we couldn't even think of the words at the time. It just was a little odd. And then I had people walking up to me, numerous people, which, you know, aren't just my friends. These are just racquetball people in general. And they, you know, were kind of like, it's weird. It's weird. And so I went to the back and of course, you know, during the match, I couldn't find the president of the, of the IRT, but, you know, imagine that I walked back there after the match and who's the first person I see it's the president of the IRT. Um, and, um, I walked up to him and I said, did you or did you not talk to Scott about the situation that you had talked to me about? And he said, I did. Now, if I could go back to that moment right now, I would say that I probably wouldn't handle the situation the way that I would have. I was not physical, okay? And I did not present any physical danger whatsoever. Let me be very clear. But at that point, with everything leading up to it, the fact that they took me, that he took that same person, took me aside to talk to me about the situation, right? Again, my, my in, in, in some words, I basically said to him, why, how could you do that? Why would you take me aside and ask me how to deal with this situation and then go and deal with it however you want? Not to mention that it's not fair to me or Scott that we're, either of us are in this position right? Like I, I wasn't there with the conversation with Scott, nor would I, nor would I ever put Scott in a situation to be on this show going, well, this is what they said. This is what I would never do that. All I know is that I was okay with Scott, not refing. 
if that was if there was a conflict of interest, right? So, but how does that how does that end up skewing his decisions? Maybe subconsciously. I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's like the overcompensation thing, right? Just the fact that it was brought up. I wasn't there for the conversation. So the way that it was handled opens it up to so many different possibilities of what could possibly happen. Like, does Scott feel his job is threatened? Like, does, I don't, I don't know. Like what, what, what's, what's happening? Like, I have no idea. I thought after he had talked to me, the situation was, was, was done. Right. And so I'm up there. Then all of a sudden now when they bring up a, a, a conflict of interest, okay. Well, now you open a can of worms. All right. So let me just go ahead and go down the list of the conflict of interest. So it's a conflict. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. So, so yeah, I just, I just want to add to that, Leo. You know, first off, Kane and I both, we, we talk all the time, and we did not lose because of the ref. We didn't lose that match because of Scott's refing. Alex and Sam played great. They deserved to beat us. They won. 100%. You know, Kane, and, Kane had made me aware um, – of, of the, the issue where the IRT approached him and asked him about this issue. And, you know, at first, at first look, I was, at first glance, I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you question the integrity of Scott, who you've been training with? The relationship's been the same for five years and no offense to the amazing players out there, but if Scott's influence isn't going to help you beat him based on the scores and the results. So, you know, I don't even know why that would have been brought up, you know, quite honestly. I, I don't think it was necessary. And Kane, you said something earlier, and this is the first time you're going to hear this, that I know the representative you spoke with had said that some players brought it to their attention. Um, I spoke with someone else from the IRT that said no, no players brought it to their attention. I, so, yeah, that's the first year hearing of it. I mean, that's – that's so who knows, right? So so point being, you know, Leo and all you fans that don't get it, bottom line is this. As soon as there's a question, the question comes up, it is this simple. Just remove them, okay? I said this. I said when I coached my son in baseball, competitive baseball for many years, you know, it wasn't really fair to him because I would overcompensate and be hardest on him to make sure that Mr. Vasquez or Mr. Wazalencha can't say, oh, well, Sudsy, you're just showing favoritism. And I'm not saying Scott did that, and neither is Kane. Kane, correct? We're not saying he did that. No, but, not saying. But, if, but Kane's thought process on the whole thing at the time was, was kind of like, that's weird. You know, like, there was just maybe some questionable calls. Maybe not. Maybe Scott did a perfect job. Maybe he didn't. Whatever. I think there's more to it, and I think that Kane's going to touch on that now. But I think that when that fuse was lit was when they brought something to Kane and Scott's attention that was unnecessary. I mean, looking back now, well, I, just, I, 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 look at, well, I look at the timeline, right? And what I don't understand is the timeline. So, you know, these, these investors and these, these people over the IRT have been involved in the IRT for a while. I've, like, I've been beating these guys for a long time. All of a sudden, none of that has ever come into question. None of it. All of a sudden, I don't play for 19 months, and then I, the, I'm not even at the U.S. Open for 24 hours, and this situation is brought up to me? It just seems a little odd to me. It, it just, you know, Leo, it, honestly, it just sucked for obviously not only Kane, but that sucked to put Scotty in that position too because as Kane's explaining, you know, Kane said, did you mention this to Scotty? Imagine if you're Scott now and, 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 and they bring that to your attention and we're not going to bring Scott in, you know, he's doing what he's doing and we appreciate that, but really, you know, and, and, and I know Scotty well, and we all do, um, his integrity cannot be questioned, you know, but subconscious human behavior sometimes, right? Like how come my son hits a home run? I give him a fist pump, but Leo, your son hits a home run. I'm throwing him on my shoulders. So anyway, but I think, it's, I think, but I think also too, though, it's important is to understand that if the situation from the IRT was handled in more of a professional manner, we wouldn't probably even, we might, we probably 99% would not be sitting here right now be, because of the way that it was handled. And, but we're going to touch up on some other things as well too. Right. right? So, I, so yeah. like, you know, I don't, 
I don't get that, right? So, you know, again. I think they could have they could have handled that better. I think the IRT would recognize that. I don't know. Um, I haven't asked them that, but I, I think heard you know the IRT. I think if they could kind of rewind the clock, you know, they're not bad people. They're not all bad people. I should say. I, um, I, agree. I, I I think that you know this was something maybe that should never have been brought up because, in my opinion knowing Kane, you know, kind of your state of mind and where you were at and, and just, you know, a lot of the pressures that you deal with, which we'll touch on, you know, that kind of lit the fuse. And, and Leo, I mentioned this to you, that might've been the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, but it could have been maybe a hundred other things at the moment, but that one was pretty, you know, it, it was a tough one. And I don't think Kane nor Scott should have been in that situation. And I do in this case, I think the IRT messed up right there. So, but Kane, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. So, you know, I mean, I, I think that, you know, if you want to bring up a conflict of interest, you know what? Fine. Right. Like, let's let's talk about it. OK, I'm OK with talking about it. If Scott refing me is a conflict of interest, how is it when Suds and I are playing in our match in our first match of the U.S. Open? We have Conrado refing, who is a player in the top eight. <laughs> And we have Kareem and C Carlos Keller who are playing. Now, if Scott refing me is a conflict of interest, how is it that having other competing pros in that situation that I just gave you right there, how is mm -hmm. that not a conflict of interest? Now, that doesn't happen in any other sport either, right? Not to mention, let me, let me drop a bombshell on everyone right now, okay? What really got me was on Saturday night, okay, I ended up getting a message, a picture of Daniel De La Rosa and Scott at a Texas dinner together. <laughs> now, I'm not blaming Scotty and I'm not blaming Daniel, but this just seems a little odd where after 19 months, I, I, I come to the court and I'm getting approached by this, but yet that's okay. So listen, I'm okay with talking about conflict of interest. If we're going to talk about it, let's talk about it, but let's be fair across the board here. Right. Then I can also go a step further and say, right. Again, I, because, because Scott's involved in, in all of this, because of what happened with the IRT, we talk about conflict of interest. Scott plays in the tournament. I don't have a problem with it personally, but if you talk about conflict of interest, what other ref in tennis plays in the tournament, right? I'm just, I'm just now that it's bringing, being all, what I feel like being thrown in my face that like Scott's being biased, which I have, I don't believe whatsoever. Now all of a sudden, all these other situations come into play that why aren't these a conflict of interest? Right. I, that's that's all I'm saying, right? Like I I I, I think that I, I think that everybody's fair, and I and I think that North Scott would never do something like that, right? I like mm -hmm. to believe that Conrado and all those other guys wouldn't do something like that. But if the IRT is talking about a conflict of interest, then let's talk about a conflict of interest across the board. Are there any other conflicts of interest that you want to mention now that you're kind of bringing these other things to light? Um, no, those are like the, the, I mean, in, in relation to what I'm going through, I think that, you know, I, I think, yeah, I think those are valid. Um, you know, if you want to go on, on, on another level, um, we can say that, um, it's, I, I, since Denver, I have heard, okay. And a couple of them have been verified that, owners of the IRT are saying the tour is better off without Kane saying that that ship has sailed. Okay. I also had somebody come and tell me now again, right? Like these are people that I, I trust. These are people that wouldn't just call me and say these things. I also got uh, informed that when I sent a message to the IRT, which we'll probably get into that, I sent a message to the IRT before I had pulled out, you know, so they, they, they know that why I did it. Apparently, the IRT was interested in changing the flight for Carlos. Meanwhile, 
They didn't even respond to me when I sent a text message out. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I can't answer for all that. And if you guys would like, I, I have the text message to the president of what exactly I said, if you would like me to read it. I mean, you know, um, I sent the message at 11 o'clock, um, stated that, um, this was the next day after this was the, the next day. Match. Correct. For, before the your next, uh, semifinals singles. Correct. At 11 o'clock. At 11 in the morning. o'clock, I sent one of the presidents in the morning. I sent him a message saying, I don't basically, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to play today. I don't appreciate the position that I've been stuck in, that Scott's been stuck in. You know, basically, if you go back and you look in the last 19 months, you go look on social media. You would never be able to tell that I was the number one player in the world, nor I even played on the IRT, yet I'm the number one player in the world. You know, I said, you know, you guys act like I don't even exist, right? I'm hearing grumblings from Denver and Chicago. I, I heard from a sponsor, and no, it's not Keith who helps me out. This is another sponsor who heard it right from one of the owner's lips that the IRT is better without Kane. That's a fact. That's the fact. Right. So again, right here, I'm in a position where all these things are happening and all of a sudden, like I'm be this situation is being treated in the manner that it is. Then I don't even get a response from the IRT, but I'm told from a reliable source that during that time. Okay. So 11 o'clock, let's go to the timeline. 11 o'clock is when I texted the president. Okay. Listed my reasons why. I got no response. At 1.38, I responded because no one had responded to me at that point. No one had said anything to me at that point. 20 minutes before I was supposed to play, my match was scheduled for 2 o'clock. I texted him and I said, thank you because now I know I'm making the right decision. The fact that you didn't respond to me lets me know that I made the right decision, okay? So in that time of 11 o'clock to 1.40, I was told that the IRT was back behind the curtain trying to find a way to pay for Carlos Keller's change of flight. So who changed Carlos Keller's flight? Someone did. Can someone, can someone pull up? Can, can someone verify or not verify that the IRT did that? Because that is also a conflict of interest. You don't reach out to your number one player in the world, yet you're, yet there's conversation about changing my competitor's flight so that he can be there. Because he had his flight scheduled for 6 a.m., I was told. I don't know. Did you guys hear anything like that? I, I, I do not know. The only, the, the only thing that I heard was that they were on Southwest and that's when Southwest canceled like a thousand flights. So I have no idea. I mean, I mean, when, yeah, when you, when you told me that, and I know the source that it came from, obviously it's, you know, legit. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I think that, you know, now all of a sudden you think of the situations that are happening and you think about, you know, go on any, listen, you can go on Facebook and you can go on Instagram. You can go on any social media. You would never know that I was the number one player in the world. Why, why is that? What, what, I don't understand. And honestly, how about the owner or whoever, one of the owners, how about you get on here right now and why don't you explain how you can say that the most decorated racquetball player, the tour is better off without me. I mean, think about that for a second. Like, let's just really, for all you racquetball lovers, whether or not you love me or whether you hate me, no matter what, no matter what, think about what that statement means. That would be like tennis coming out right now going, hey, forget about Federer because we got Djokovic. But yet, racquetball doesn't even have a Djokovic yet. Let's not forget, I wasn't struggling through the draw, okay? I was feeling good, better than I felt in a long time, so... You know, again, right? Like here's a situation in our sport where this sure feels like more of like a personal agenda as opposed to, you know, what's best for the sport, right? Because let's be honest, none of us on here right now can sit and say any sport is better 
without one of the greatest players. Like you think the NFL is is the NFL is getting ready to push Brady out of out of the out of the league? You think you think that you know Sidney Crosby in hockey? You think they're like yeah, you know the league is better without Sidney Crosby? Yeah, the, you know the, like like. Again, I don't, I don't understand that mentality. Like, yeah, Roger Federer is better outside of tennis. Like, yeah, he, that ship is sailed, you know? Like, what, what, I don't understand that mentality. How are we supposed to grow as a, as a community? Like, all I ever wanted to do, all I ever, my job is very simple. My job is to win. That's my job. Whether you, you know, yeah, I got to shake hands and I got to do my stuff or whatever. But my job, my job is to win. And here I sit being the most decorated racquetball player ever. And look at the position I'm in. If that doesn't scare racquetball people, man, I don't know, man. Anything, listen, you, you, can, you can have your personal opinion about me. You can not like me. That's, that's fine. Like, it's okay with me, right? But when you don't like me and you're making decisions based on you just not liking me in general, personally, that's just not cool. And that's not about building the sport, you know, like whatever I've done to any of those people, listen, man, I'm sorry. I like to think that I went about my career and I went and I put my head down and I kicked ass and, you know, I did it for my family. I did it for the real friends and true friends that I have. Right. I did it for the historians, like the people like Sudsy and Cliff and Marty and all those people that work so hard, you know, to, to put racquetball on the map. I wanted to continue that. And here I sit, feel truly like I'm being punished for being too successful and winning. I've won so much now that people go, or the people that matter or want to make a decision go, you know what? No one's really close to beating Kane. So let's put him in certain situations where all of a sudden now he has, like, look at this situation I'm in right now, you know? And I have to stand up for what I believe in. And I believe that, like, listen, this is not fair. This is, and it's not just about me. I, you know, yes, you know, I'm the one going through this, right? And I have the most mm -hmm. to gain and I have the most to lose. But let's not be mistaken here, okay? You take me out of the, you take me out of the conversation and I'm gone from racquetball. Let's make, make no mistake about this. Short term, everybody makes a bunch of money. I get it, right? De La Rosa now, right? Wins the U.S. Open, doubles and singles, makes himself a good whatever, 6,600, 7,000, right? You know, everybody starts making a little bit more money. The problem is that gets old pretty quick. And then guess what happens? Then you're going to win for two or three years, and then you're going to build some clout, and you're going to go to a company just like I did, and they're going to go, well, you know, racquetball's not really – you know, racquetball is not really where it used to be. Like, we can't really give you this money. We can't really do this. Like, this isn't just about me. If they're, if they, like, in, I don't know what the motive is, right? I have an idea based on these things that I'm hearing and these things that are happening to me. And I'm thinking to myself, if they're going to do this to me, what's going to stop them from doing it to a guy like De La Rosa who has one world title? I have 14 world titles and 15 U.S. Open titles. What's to stop these people if they have, a, they have their own personal agenda, right? Because, again, once upon a time, I didn't say anything in my career, okay? I put my head down, I played, and that was it. But then there came a point where I became an owner of the IRT, and I had much more at stake. And so I started voicing my opinion when the IRT was sold, I voiced my opinion more and more and more about how I felt the player should be treated, how everything. And that's where really, in my opinion, where it all went south for me. Because I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't vocal throughout my career. You guys both know that you guys have been around long enough that I wasn't really vocal until the last five, seven years of, of my career right now. And that's because I took a lot of I took a lot of pressure on myself because of what I was accomplishing that I needed to stand up. I needed to stand up. I needed to voice not just for me, like for instance, who can come on this show right now and tell me that I don't deserve anything extra from anyone else? No one's even close to what I've accomplished. Why don't why why is it so hard for me to for, for me to say that I deserve more than anybody else? I've done I've done I've done 
tenfold what anyone else has done in the sport. Why don't I deserve it? Like, I don't, un- that's the part I don't understand. Like, I'm selfish for saying that, yet here I am fighting for me, but I'm also fighting for these other guys too, right? You think that I'm going to go away and, the, and, and what I've accomplished and you think racquetball is going to get better? No, everybody's short term is going to make a bu- make a little bit more money because I'm gone. So people in the quarters make the semis, people in the semis make the fun. You're going to make a little bit of money. But guess what? Three, four years after that, you're going to sit there and you're going to be in the same position going, hey, why isn't this changing? And guess what? You're going to be in the same position that I am right now. So that's kind of what I'm fighting for as well, too. Kane, okay, let, me, let, me, let me ask you, um, you know, I'm sorry, Leo, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go first because I'm going to do a follow-up. Go ahead. So, Kane, you know, I know a lot of people, including family members, my brother, I told you, you know, they were, they were looking for something like tangible to touch. And un- unfortunately, at the end of this, you know, we talked about it, right? There may not be something you can hand everybody to say, here's the reason. But you, you and I have spoken. You've spoken with some of your, you know, closest friends and allies about you know, years and years of, of, of disagreements or, 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 you know, tough, tough decisions that maybe you liked or didn't like. And, you know, and in fairness, nobody, not one person on the internet, uh, maybe a couple people in the sport and the history of the sport can understand what you've had to deal with, you know, what you go through on a daily level. And, and that's okay. You know, and I say this to anybody commenting and I can't really see the comments because of the situation, how we see this. Um, but, you know, it's, you have no idea. You know, there's a lot of people out there that this wasn't an easy, an easy decision for Kane. Um, I, I was with him, you know, that morning. My wife was with him. Veronica said, she told Kane, please go play. You know, she wanted Kane to play. But at the end of the day, she understood, you know, because she was able to talk to him in a different light and, and see where his, his head was at. And this isn't like one thing happening. This isn't drama. This isn't a soap opera you know, these are real feelings. Like there's a human side to this and, and whether, whether or not, you know, it, whether you want to believe it or not, no, Kane's not soft. He'll be the first guy to stand there and fight for you. If he believes that he should fight for you, trust me, I can give you specific examples. So can many of our friends and peers, but Kane, you know, I think it's important that you discuss some specifics as far as, you know, what you feel it does when, when you know, for a fact that IRT owners um, and again, they're not all bad. We're talking maybe one or two ones that maybe just don't like you and that's okay. You don't have to like anyone, you know, it's all right, like who you want, but, you know, have said pretty specific damaging things about you to others. And sometimes they don't even realize, you know, who they might be saying it to or who hears, but talk about how that, you know, you've talked about it, how it could affect you, how it could affect others and, and, you know, how it feels, man. Well, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a horrible feeling. I mean, I think that any of those people that were, that talk bad about me, if you could get, if I could get 30 minutes with you, you know, sitting at a table, (laughs) I think that you would change your mind. I mean, I'm a simple man. I really am. And, uh, you know, all I ever wanted it, it in racquetball, I just, I felt like if I won, everything else would fall in place, you know, like I really did my job. Honestly, my job was one thing, to kick ass. And honestly, I can show you all my contracts, and that's what I was paid to do. I was paid to kick ass. And guess what? I was the best one to do it. I was the best person to do it. And, you know, I never thought that I'd be sitting here 20 years later feeling like I'm being punished for being too good. I I, I, I just, I never thought that. I always, I, I always... I was always open to do whatever I needed to do for the sport for, you know, and listen, all I can do is take care of myself. Like I mentioned with De La Rosa at the beginning, right? He can just take care of himself. I can just take care of myself. And so I dealt with myself. I, I, I just felt like if I went out there and I won and the more that I won and the more that, you know, my sport can compare to the greats of other sports, the bigger that this sport will be. And, you know, if, if, if I don't get, if I don't get, rich and be able to call this sport a million dollar sport well i hope the next person after that does and i think that that's the part that probably breaks my heart the most is that you know these people and whether you're relevant or whether you're irrelevant you know like 
one of the things that bothers me the most is like, we talk about racquetball being really small, right? And I have four kids and, you know, listen, I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a bad guy. I don't go around picking fights. I don't, I don't talk, I don't talk bad about other people. And because racquetball is so small, it makes me very, very upset that my daughters can go onto the internet and try to follow me and try to, and try to, and try to support me through racquetball. And they have to go and look at stuff that just isn't true about their father. You know, I'm going and picking fights. I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm a liar. I'm this, I'm that. Like, are you willing to share that, that episode that happened, Ken? Because there's a lot of rumors uh, going around that you threatened somebody at the U.S. Open. Can you, can you squash yeah. that and let us know Yeah. what happened? So on Keep Racquetball Great, there was a post about my sponsorship. I went on there and I posted, and I want to make it very clear. Everything that I'm saying here right now and everything that I'm saying from here on out is 100% the truth, okay? I, 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 I'm not that person. I have character. I'm, I'm not lying about what I'm saying. And I went out on Keep Racquetball Great, and I tried to set the record straight about what was happening with my sponsorship. Um, and there was a guy, okay, from Pro Kenix. Uh, his name's Rod, okay? that went on there and basically said, don't believe everything you read. And so I responded back on Facebook and I said to him, are you calling me a liar? Well, he deleted the comment, right? That was it, nothing further, whatever. I play my first match. I see this Rod guy, which I, who I've known through ProKenix for years and years and years. He's been loyal to ProKenix. Rob Blanton is sitting next to him. I walk up to I walk up to Rod who put the post up. I said to Rod, I said, "Hey, remember when you called me a liar on Facebook?" I said, "Now's your chance to call me a liar to my face." And he said, "I'm sorry." He goes, "I should have never put that out there. I was way out of line. I apologize. If you notice, I deleted it after, and I'm really sorry." And I said to him, I said, I respect that. And I said to him, I want you to know that no matter what my situation or what Mike Martinez and Pro Kennedy is saying about me through this whole situation, okay, I want you to know that I respect you, okay, as a person and as a friend, someone that I've got to know through Pro Kennedy. And I get that this is a difficult situation, but I don't want that to affect our friendship. And I don't want that to affect any interaction between us. He said, no, no, man, it's all good. Thank you. I appreciate it. I shook hands with him. I walked away. Okay. That was the situation. And the other situation that I heard was that I got that same person kicked out of the seats. That's not true. Those were not my seats. Those were another sponsor's seats. And the other sponsor went over there and tell, told him to leave. I had nothing to do with that. I had zero to do with that. So in that whole situation about me being physical and this and that, it's not true whatsoever. Hundred percent not true. Thank you. Yeah, I don't. I, I, don't, I, I laugh at some of. The, I mean, I just, I, you know, I, I just try to avoid some of it. You know, physical. I mean, listen, anybody can say anything they want, especially that wasn't there. And you know, it's it's just good to hear well, some but, things you know, that really but, did happen. Or you know, but the thing is, is that I think that it's important to understand, right? Like we always preach about how small our sport is. Okay. Now, whether or not we want to give credit to make racquetball great or keep racquetball great or whatever, all of those forms have an influence. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. They do our sport. You know, if someone puts a comment about Tom Brady, that's one comment within mm -hmm. or even 100 within 10 million. But when you have 100 comments, in, you know, about something like that or a post like that that's that misleading that affects our sport much more than football and all that so that's a problem right that's a problem that you know which again right like i go back to things happening right like hearing owners saying that you know 
they're better off without me. We got forms going out there posting stuff that's really not true about me. I also caught wind of a few people walking up to me telling me some stuff that Pro Kenix was also saying that's not true about me. So now you group all this stuff in and it's like, it, is this just like a big conspiracy? Like, I'm just confused. I'm confused. Like, you know, all this stuff happening. Like, it's just, it's, it's just odd to me, you know? Cause it's not like, it's not like I'm losing. It's not like I'm falling off, you know, I, I'll accept any challenge anywhere. Any, what do you want? What, who do you want? What, what do you want to bet? Like, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm like, that's the thing that I don't understand. Right. Like I can understand if I, if I was falling off and I, and I wasn't winning and here I am this champion grasping for his last breath of, you know, that's, that's not it. Like, I mean, you know, let's go. Can, can we go back to Saturday so we can finish up this part? Cause that's that, you know, people are, are in the chat and, and they're still uh, not understanding, I guess, the actual reason why, how was your communication with, or in your terms, your lack of communication with the IRT? Um, was there anything else that led up to this? Because I, I know that it just wasn't one episode. You know, you talked, you've talked in the past about, uh, you know, not having the sponsor. Uh, you know, I witnessed firsthand there at the U.S. Open in the Pro-Am doubles where you did not have a, a new racket to give uh, to the uh, person that uh, was drawn to play with you. And, you know, we kind of talked about that as far as should the IRT have come in and said, don't worry about it. Pro Kenix is a partner. We can get a racket for you. We'll just get Daniel to get a second one. How, tell us how that went down when you had to actually explain to the guy that you didn't have a racket and how you felt. Right, well, I mean, well, I mean, you know, he was an E-Force guy, so I'm pretty sure he'd rather get a watch, which I gave him, than a Pro Kenix racket because he probably wouldn't have played with the Pro Kenix. But I don't know. I, I don't know. I just, uh, no one talked to me. No one came up to me and, I, you know, I guess there's a part of me too that like, no matter what my situation is with Mike Martinez and Pro Kenix, I mean, why can't Mike walk up to me and give me a racket? I mean, it's not like it, you like, I've done nothing for the, for the company for the last 13 years I've been with him. Like I, you know, I, I don't that I, I guess like, Hey, listen, he's free to deal with it how he wants to deal with it. And if he wants to act like I don't exist, then that's fine. But like, you know, I ended up giving him one of my crowning moment watches and a hat and, you know, you make the best of it. Right. I mean, was it embarrassing? Not, not really. I mean, you know, I mean, I think that it's more, you know, again, left out in the cold, no one talking, no one, you know, the IRT is not coming up. The IRT is coming up to me talking about a conflict of interest with Scott, but they're not coming and talking up saying, Hey man, we'll get you a racket for your sponsor doubles partner, you know? So, you know, it is what it is. How is that relationship? with you and pro Kenix right now yeah i mean i'd have to say there is really none um you know uh you know i think the most disappointing thing about it is that you know i'm, I'm starting to hear things that just aren't true that are being said and i just again right like here i go like what with, you know, uh i'm hearing that uh you know that uh they don't owe me any money and that they offered me a contract and I declined the contract, which is, that's a hundred percent false. Um, that's not true. Um, they owe me quite a bit of money and they refused to pay me that money. And they never offered me another contract because I, I said to them that we needed to deal with the contract that we currently have that's outstanding before I sign anything. And I also told them that I would be more than happy to sign another contract as long as we figured out a way to um, work out a deal with what was current, our current contract that was not being obligated no ob or finished their obligation with, with me. So, you know, discouraging, you know, I'm not, I, I, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm not going around bashing pro Kenix. I mean, I'm, you know, I get it. It's a business and, you know, and I mean, it's hurtful too in that, in that sense. Right. Like, I mean, I think everybody that's probably watching this probably relates Kane, Wassel and Chuck and crown and, and, and pro Kenix. Right. And so I've done a lot for that company. And so for them 
to just kind of go, ah, you know what? Off you go. I mean, you know, I used to have conversations with Mike Martinez about working for Procanix and taking his position, you know? Now look where I am, you know? Which, again, I talk about the future of the sport and these guys, right? Like, I'm sure Daniel at some point is going to want to be, you know, involved in pro kinics or whatever. And, you know, but again, you know, what impact does these things that are currently happening to me, what impact do they have on the future of the other champions that come along? Because I can't help but think that, again, I will, I'll reiterate it. If they're going to do it to me, they're going to have no problem doing it to somebody else. That's just my mentality. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong for thinking about that. If, if you, I don't know what you guys think, but you know. So we, there's some people in the chat and maybe they joined in late, but what is your, uh, to close up the uh, situation at the U S open, what was your ultimate reason or how did you come to the conclusion of you weren't going to come and play and, and forfeit. I think that's what people in the chat are really wanting to know. And so how did you come to that decision? The decision was based solely on the fact that everything that I had been told and everything that I has been brought to my attention, uh, again, the Scott thing, the whole ref thing, that was also unprofessional. And to me, I'm not going, I cannot subject myself to this. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I, I want to be a part of an entity that wants to be a part with me and wants to be promoting me and wants to, and wants the, the vision and has the vision that I have, not push me out. And to me, there is every sign of them pushing me out. There is no sign of them keeping me once again, right? De La Rosa became the number one player after the U.S. Open, okay? So where's the promotion of Kane Wasilinchuk on the path in, in, in before that, right? So to me, this was a stand for me of just myself and taking a stand and saying, you know, listen, no matter what I do and how I did this, I was going to, it was going to, it was always going to be a question because the reality of it is, is that if I would have went and I would have won, and then I would be sitting here having this conversation, people would go, what a cry baby. I mean, what, what is he, what is he whining about? I mean, he just won the U S open for the 16th time, right? This is something that got the attention of racquetball. And to me, this is what's important right now. My, listen, another 16, 16 U S open. My, unfortunately, my life is not changing. My life is not changing. Right. And to me, I have got to, I have got to stand for what I believe in. And it's not, and, and it's not just about me. I have to stand in belief of, again, the way that things are being run, I don't agree with. The way that the players are being treated, I don't agree with. I don't agree with that. And I don't want to be part of that if that's the way it's going to be. I am the leader. Whether you like me or don't like me, I am the leader in the sport. And until somebody comes along and does what I do, it doesn't matter. You can have your own champion and you can have the people that you prefer to win and whatever. But the reality of it is, is that again, right? Right now, I am the number one player in the world. I am the one, the leader of the sport. And if I don't take this stand, who does? Who does? And Kane, you know, you, you said it. And, and Leo, uh, like I said, you know, Veronica and I were with Kane and Allie that morning. And I could tell you, you know, it was not an easy decision for him. You know, it wasn't something that he was excited about. And, you know, nobody can really understand all, all that there is. There is a lot of pressure, you know, that, that comes with being in his position. And, you know, whether it was feeling underappreciated or whether, you know, he didn't like the fact of, of owners or representatives of the tour literally talking bad about him you know, talking negative about him. But, this is years in, but also too, Suds, this is years and years of this, right? Right. Like when, when. It, yeah, when, that decision, that's the important thing that you didn't make that decision like that night. It was, it was almost like when I was talking to you and Veronica, when we were talking, Leo, like with Kane that morning, 
it was it was like a sense of of exhaustion. And he wasn't tired from physically playing. I mean, I think he won all three matches. Nobody scored total together 15 points. So it wasn't a matter of physical exhaustion. You know, I saw somebody that I've been in those shoes. And, you know, he just looked like I'm done. And he just felt that, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Kane. So please, you know, don't, don't let me. But like he said, in, in his words, he didn't agree with how things were being run and decisions that were being made. And something that you're not talking enough about, Kane, whether people know it or not, or you remember, you've always, every time this comes up, you always talk about the other players. You're always worried about like these young kids and, and, and all like, hey, well, but if this happens to me, you know, and I think that's the natural born kind of leader protector you are. You know, you play ice hockey and we talk about it all the time, man. You know, if somebody, somebody gets in a scrum, you're going to be right there. Like you're, you're wired to do that. And in this case, you know, Leo, what I heard from Kane and what I saw was somebody trying to stand up and, and maybe the words don't come out exactly the way the internet wants them to. And again, mm -hmm. it's difficult, right? Because we are such a small sport. And, and, and to Kane's point, you know, one comment, you know, really infiltrates, gets to us. Trust me. I comment on Tom Brady or Jordan or, you know, Crosby all the time. They're not seeing it. You know, I, I've asked Djokovic a million times to, I don't know, come play racquetball. You know, in racquetball, we see it. So it's kind of a, it's a pro and con of our sport, you know, where you can directly communicate with us also, but it is weighing, you know, it is. And, and that morning I could tell you, you know, trying to give paint a picture for everybody. We were in Kane's hotel room and, uh, you know, we were talking about it and yeah. And as everybody saw, you know, it's okay, you know, it's okay. And it, he'll be okay. And, and things will be okay. But at the time, that's what he felt he needed to do. And I think that anybody that cares knows and, and truly cares about where he's at, like understand that, you know, it's not going to make everybody happy. Right. Like I get it. My own brother, my brother, Munchik, <laughs> he's like, yeah, but what happened? What happened? What was it exactly? And I'm, I'm telling them what, what Kane's saying and, and people just aren't satisfied and that's okay too. You know, um, a lot of you have the luxury of calling in sick tomorrow, right? Not going to work. Hey, lucky you. You know, maybe, maybe that was Kane's day of saying, I just can't handle this right now. You know, I don't, I, or he could handle it, but that was his position. Well, and I think also too, I think also too, what a lot of people don't understand is that I played a lot of tournaments injured, a lot of tournaments and whether I won or not was, is irrelevant. I put my body on the line a lot of times based on sponsors, on, the position and what I knew, you know, what I meant to the tournament, um, you know, remember, you know, seven years ago, or maybe not even maybe, I don't know, whenever we sold the IRT, I used to be a part part owner of the IRT, um, mm -hmm. you know, very soon after that, remember the IRT, the IRT told me they were going to kick me off the IRT. Remember that. And right? I think a lot of people forget that. Um, you know, I had partially torn my MCL. I wasn't playing tournaments because I was injured. I got a phone call saying that if I don't play, the 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 investors, and again, that's a very vague because I don't I don't you know I I, I don't know all the investors unfortunately, but I'm, I know some of them and I like them. And apparently, those investors had vote had had been having a problem with me not. Um, being in the tournaments because I was hurt. So they're losing, they're losing sponsors and they're losing tournaments. And, and so they wanted to kick me off the tour in which I think people vividly remember in Sarasota, I announced my retirement. Um, that was why is because they told me they were going to kick me off the tour. And uh, so I did that and we ended up working stuff out and, you know, it's, it's been a, it's been a struggle. I mean, I had a conversation with one of the main investors when I first, was part and uh, of you know and i literally was on the phone with him for two minutes and he lied to me like like blatantly lied to me like I, I was a part owner i know what the irt was sold for i know the whole everything and here i am on the phone and we're and we're having a conversation to establish a rapport establish you know some sort of you know you know uh, relationship right you know per, like the business relationship and within the first two minutes He's not being truthful about what the IRT is sold for. And I had to stop him and I had to say, before we dig this hole any further, like, I want you to know that I was a part owner of the IRT. 
And I know what the IRT was sold for. I got a dividends check. Like I know what it was sold for. So here I am on the phone and we're talking about building a relationship, but we're two minutes into it and there's already dishonesty, you know? So that was another, you know, small part, you know, that was another small part of what ended up happening at the U S open, not to mention the big part, like, honestly, use me, use me to put me out there wherever you want. I'm, I'm open. I'm open. I'll go play golf with someone. I'll go, I'll go schmooze with anyone. I'm, I'm okay. Use me. Let's build this. We're in this together, but we're not really in this together. You see what I'm saying? Like we're in this mm -hmm. together, but yet here I am. I'm like, listen, look at what I've built for my, for just for myself and look at what racquetball can piggyback on and use. I'm not saying that all those other players don't have value, but currently until they come and remotely do anything that I'm, that I'm close to what I'm doing, the value won't be the same. You compare it to any other sport. Djokovic wasn't relevant until he was chasing Nadal and Federer. Other than that, it was just Djokovic, you know? So, you know, and I go back to Tiger Woods, right? Did go when Tiger was winning all the time, did golf go, ah, it's time to move on. It's, it's, you know, it's, that's old, you know, you know, we want some new blood. That's, that's not the way to build the sport. That's to me, you embrace champions, you know? Okay. How, how is your communication with the IRT now, as of right now? I haven't heard anything. So they put out a statement uh, soon after the U.S. Open. But you had also told us that you had messaged the IRT uh, your quote and that you had requested that it be included in that statement. So how did all that, how did all that happen? So or did it happen? So it did happen. Um, what ended up happening was I sent them that message. I got no response from them, and that was it. Um, I sent, uh, after the whole situation happened where it actually, I had forfeited, then I got some, some personal messages of saying that the one owner was out and I'm done with this and, you know, kind of on and on and on. Then he had texted me later on and saying, what statement would you like to put out? I then texted him the statement that I wanted to put out. And for whatever reason, that statement wasn't put out and obviously I saw the statement from the IRT saying they have no idea or no nothing, which I mean, I don't know what other to say than that's just false. I mean, I, I texted them that I didn't say I wasn't going to play. I said, I don't know if I'm going to play. And I listed the reasons why I got nothing in return until I finally sent the text at 20 minutes before my match going, you know what? The fact that you didn't respond tells me everything I need to know. I'm out. And then I got a response. Not one time was that response, hey, come talk to us. Hey, let's sit down. Let's talk about this. You know, you're the number one player. You're the 14, you know, 15-time U.S. Open champion. Like, let's talk about this. Let's come. There was nothing, nothing at all from that. So, you know, I also told them the statement that I would like to be put out um, as well, too. Uh, of course, I have those text messages, of course, to the president of, of the IRT and, and, uh, you know, they, they didn't say anything. You, you also mentioned that you had some other dealings in the past. You had talked about those a little bit. Um, some of them you'd mentioned, like when you were injured or you were sick, you had to pull out of a tournament, uh, they would, uh, you could possibly get fined. Um, I want to ask you about that. And then also there were some rumors that you had said that since you didn't have a sponsor, uh, you that the IRT was not at, looking at that in your best interest. And you felt like, you know, were they not helping you get sponsors or were they? Well, I mean, I think the second part of that is that I just, I, I would think that the IRT would want their number one player sponsored. Um, I never had any conversation um, personally to, you know, with the IRT about that, but I would, I would think that again, right. You know, we want to compare ourselves to other sports you know, I'd like to think that like, if, you know, if Djokovic or Federer or Nadal was, 
you know, not competing because they didn't have a sponsor. I would like to think that the ATP would call somebody and be like, hey, listen, this is important. You know, like we, we need this guy out here, you know, and kind of seems like the opposite. Um, you know, uh, to touch on the first part of that, um, for the better part of probably seven to eight years, um, I had a lot of pressure. I don't think people realize the pressure that was put on me to show up at a tournament, whether or not I was injured or not. Um, I would call you know, the IRT and I would say, Hey, listen, I, I, I can't, I can't play Like I'm, I'm injured. I can't play. And they would say to me, if you don't show up at the tournament, the sponsor said that we will not be having the event next year. And it was no mention of any other player. It was always me. Then I would have to call the sponsors, whether you were a $50 sponsor or whether you were a $5,000 sponsor, I would have to call you and explain why I can't come to the tournament. I don't know if that was ever, I don't know if that was happening to anyone else. I don't ever remember hearing about it um, at all. Uh, this went on for a good amount of time. Uh, even, even to the point where uh, a couple of times I chose not to go to a tournament based on my daughter's birthdays or, you know, something that was important to my daughters. And I would get flack for that. I would get, you know, well, the sponsors are going to not sponsor next year and we're not going to have the tournament. And, so when all this stuff is going on, I mean, it's just building value into me, right? You're not asking for anyone else. You're not, you know, and so um, you know, I started saying to them, well, if that's the case, then, you know, give me some incentive, right? Mm -hmm. Give me an appearance fee and I'll go and I'll play and I'll play injured, right? But I'm not going to go. I'm not, I'm not going to go and play injured and do all this stuff. I mean, this is not short term for me. This is long term. And again, you don't get to 15 U.S. Opens and 14 U.S. and 14 World Championships without knowing your body and doing the right thing. That's just the bottom line, too. You know, people probably don't think about that. You know, out of my 14 World Titles, man, I don't think one I've been healthy the whole way through. <laughs> we're we're not healthy 100% of the time. That's that's how no. I say it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, probably a few more questions here before we uh, get to the end. I want to ask you, um, where do you go from here? Will you play in Arizona? There's a tier IRT tier one in Arizona. There's also a IRT tier one later in November in Sarasota. I mean, are you, do you have any plans? Can you share? You know, honestly, I don't know. I, d I don't know. I, uh, I struggled, uh, you know, I struggled today because you know, there were times today and in the past week where this, this was going to be, this was going to be it. I was going to announce that I'm done. And, you know, I, you know, I just, there's something, I, you know, I don't like what's being done to me. I don't like what's being done to our sport. Um, but I don't know there's something that just makes me want to keep fighting for what is the right. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like I could easily walk away from this right now. And I, my legacy is not tarnished. I, I don't care. Like I'm good. I'm, I'm good. There's nothing more that I can do in this sport. That's going to make a difference. And, you know, and so I struggled today and the last week of, you know, just, you know, I, I never, Today, I sat back and thought a lot to myself that when I was a 19-year-old kid and I aspired to be a, a, a number one player in the world, I never thought that I would be sitting here right now feeling like I'm being punished for being too good and winning too much. I never actually thought that I would ever be here. And, you know, maybe some people might consider that flattering, but it's not flattering to me. It's not. And, you know whether you like me or you don't like me, that's your choice. Um, I get it in this world. You have people that always like you and you have people that don't, and then you have people that just really don't care. Um, you know, I, I always felt like I had the sports best interest in mind. Um, I did a lot of things throughout my career that, um, 
put the sport first, put the company that I was with first to be sitting here where I am right now is a tough pill to swallow. And the only thing that I can think of is that I'm here because of some personal agendas. Um, I'm here because of jealousy and envy. Um, I haven't slipped up at, at all. And if anybody wants to put any money up against anybody, you let me know where, when I'll play in front of your family. I don't care. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm ready. So this isn't a matter of a champion slipping and getting old and, you know, riding off into the sunset, you know, so this is a very tough pill to swallow for me to be potentially my last video and my last known racquetball match to be in the way that it is. Yeah. It's not, it's not ideal. It's not ideal. But I believe in what I'm doing. And if I get blackballed for, from it, from racquetball, well, so be it. But if all you other players, I would pass on a message to you. And I would say, if you think it's going to change by me leaving, you're wrong. It's, you're wrong. You're wrong. It's not going to change. And, you know, history has proven. Uh, I got two words for the racquetball world. Paola Longoria. And, I, and the reason I say that is this. Paola, I'm very proud of her. She's done a lot for herself in, 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 in what she's done in Mexico, and Mexico has supported her. But I think that we also have to look at the fact of how has that affected the women's tour. And I think that that's something that's a very difficult situation because I think that it's great that Paola has done what she's done for herself. I, I think it's amazing and she deserves it. She's a great champion, the greatest women's player ever to play. But her success has had no correlation to the success in the United States or North America in racquetball, right? So there have been times where I have even thought to myself, maybe it would be better for racquetball that Conrado be the, the best player in the world, right? But then again, right? These are other countries that support their athletes, right? Like we can go, we can have a whole nother conversation about this stuff and how Mexico supports their athletes in Bolivia. Could you imagine if Carlos Keller won the U.S. Open this year? He would have been treated like a king when he went back home. De La Rosa wins, and guess what? It's just a different person winning. That's not what, what's different about it right now. We have a new champion after 15 years. We have a new champion. What exactly has changed for De La Rosa? That's the stuff that I'm fighting for that I don't believe that is right. Like these things need to change. These players need to be, you know, whether I'm here and I deserve it right now or whether I'm gone, those people, these, there is going to be another champion. And if, and if, and if the, and, and if I'm going to be treated the way that I'm being treated, I'm sorry, but you have to assume, and maybe I'm wrong and I hope that I'm wrong, but may, you have to assume that, the next champion is going to be treated similar. I just, I, I, I can't, you know, again, look at how many great athletes we've had in our sport, right? Say what you want about Marty. Great athlete, great guy, right? Guess what? Gone, right? You hardly hear of him. Suds, you were gone too for a certain amount of time. Cliff, gone. Now here I am. I'm in the same position. We don't embrace our champions. We embrace our champions years after they're gone. We don't embrace the champions while they're here now. And that needs to be embraced, which is why I brought up De La Rosa winning the U.S. Open. We need to embrace that, not belittle it, not, not add asterisks to it, not do this, not do that. That's not fair, right? So this, there's, again, a trend, right? There's a trend now. There's a trend that now all of a sudden, because I did what I did, there's an asterisk on De La Rosa. No, no, no. Respect him as a champion, right? Don't belittle him, you know? Well, is there any final message that you would like to obviously share with your fans and all the people that are out there? I mean, will we hear from you again? When will we see you again? Or, you know, what do you want to leave us with? I think that my time right now is it's time for me to step away for a little bit. Um, Unfortunately, uh, you know, it's not, it's not something that I want, you know, racquetball, racquetball has been my life for as long as I know. 
And I don't want it to be the end, but unfortunately I don't feel like I'm the one that's in control of that anymore. And that's a tough pill to swallow. Um, I think that I need to go away for a little while. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I've, uh, make no mistake about it. I've met some unreal people, unreal. And, you know, if, if this is the end of it, let me tell you something, this kid from a town of, I don't know, 1500, you know, just wanted to go hit the ball, you know, have some fun. Uh, I did pretty damn good for myself, you know, and, uh, you know, I would say that maybe I'm going out on my own terms if I do go out, but I think I got a lot of racquetball in me and I really do believe that. And, um, I just, uh, you know, I got really, I got a lot of people to thank probably too long to even be on here. Um, you know, I think about, you know, today I, I thought about, um, some guys from back home that I played, you know, um, I was just a little bratty kid, you know, um, and, you know, I posted that picture, I posted that picture on, uh, Facebook and, uh, that was like one of those things where I just wanted to, you know, I just want racquetball, racquetball to be fun again. You know, it's just, it's tough dealing with this stuff, you know, for not just a year for years. I mean, I've been dealing with this for over a decade and it's tough and it's hard and, you know, it's hard to hear people say bad things about you and it's hard to, you know, it's hard. It's just, it's a, it's a tough, you know, it's, it's a very, uh, it's a tough business to be in all around. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, I just, I think about, you know, just great times, great memories, um, you know, uh, you know, I just, uh, I guess, you know, the, the bad thing I guess I could say is that I sit here now and I just, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to do more. I feel like I did everything I could. And if this is the end, you know, it's the end. And, you know, I, I can at least look myself in the mirror and say that I brought it every day, you know, I brought it. And, uh, you know, uh, that's about it. I mean, I just, I have so many people that I want to thank and I don't really want to thank them right now because I don't want to believe that this is the end. Um, I like to think that, you know, uh, things will be worked out. I'd like to think that, you know, that we all want what's best for the sport. And I hope that it really does. I hope that it, this changes things and I hope I can be a part of that change. And I just, uh, you know, I hope that this isn't a personal agenda thing. I hope that, you know, I mean, you know, if somebody can get on this show and tell me a couple of good reasons why it's better that me, that I'm not in the sport, I'm okay with that. You know, um, I don't believe that. And I don't think the majority of people that want to see racquetball succeed believe that. Well, Kane, thank you for coming on the show tonight and, and letting all everybody tuning in and watching. And uh, we hope this isn't the last time we see you, I'm sure we'll have the Kane and Sudsy experiences will still be going on, but, uh, you know, we'll follow you. We'll watch you wherever you go. Yeah, I appreciate it. I mean, I, I really do, you know, I really enjoy the stuff that Suds and I are doing. Um, it brings me great joy to see smiles on people's faces and, you know, people get to know me in a different light as opposed to the Kane, the, the, you know, competitor. Uh, I, I really enjoy doing that stuff I, don't get me wrong I want to be on tour and I want to be playing and you know I, I I wish things were different and I hope things that can can be different and uh you know I just want the change for everybody I think that huh, it's just a, it's a tough time right now unfortunately you know and hopefully we can we can all get through it and maybe maybe <laughs> soon but it won't be a while it'll be you know it'll be at least at least six months you know 
I wouldn't be surprised if the IRT suspended me for a little while as well, too. That wouldn't shock me either. So um, it is what it is. Uh, but you know what? I, uh, I'm standing up for something that I believe in, and I think that I'll, I'm going to end with this. You know, coming home, I had to explain to my kids why I did what I did. And you want to talk about a hard conversation to have. Um, but I had a lot of joy telling them that in life, you got to stand up for what you believe in. And sometimes if you, it's the hardest decisions that you have to make in life for the things that you believe in. And for me, I'm proud that I was able to set that example for my kids. Um, you know, um, things might change, but I don't agree with how things are. And I literally worked 20 years for everything. And in one moment I gave up everything. And I don't think that's what a lot of people understand. I gave up really what was most dearest to my heart. The U S open was the closest was the, was my pride and joy, as you can probably tell by my record. Um, but there was a bigger message there for me. And I take a lot of pride in being able to sit in front of my kids and tell them that I stood for something that I believed in. And I think that's a great message for my kids. And so um, I think that's a great message for people in general. You know, if I end up getting blackballed and I walk away from the sport for whatever reason, I take pride in saying that I can, I can honestly say that I stood up for what I believed in and I believe it in. And uh, I believe that I'm setting a good example for my kids as well too. So do you have anything you want to say to Kane before we, uh, we let him go? Yeah, I got, I got too much to say, <laughs> but, but I'll, I'll keep it simple, believe it or not, and then we'll let them go. You know, like I said, Kane, it's okay. Uh, you're not alone. And uh, we're definitely not done with you yet. You know, you're certainly not, you know, the sport is better with you. And I know for certain I'll do everything I can to make sure you're as involved as possible. And uh, this, this will settle. And, um, you know, Leo and I are going to chat a little bit here and, you know, we're, uh, we're with you so so you'll be okay it's okay and i still love the hat and i still think you should be doc holiday's uh you know <laughs> i don't know stunt double <laughs> thank but you but i appreciate i appreciate you coming on here and, and talking about it. i know it's not easy um, yeah you know we talk a lot about it so thank you all right thank you thank you guys kane anytime hopefully we'll see you soon thank you man love you guys thank right. you man good night Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to keep up with the chat. Um, I, I didn't see anything. I'm, I'm glad I don't, I don't want to see that. You know, I hope if nothing else, Leo, though, people were able, you know, to see the human side there in the end. Um, there's a human side to it. And too many times, too often, everybody just, chats and yells and screams or types or texts right and we don't listen and you know my support and my love for Kane and, and what he's going through is I've been there I've personally been in in a dark you know place with our sport you know and sometimes you know there's there's fingers to point there's no doubt about it and, and there's names to call out um but it, but at the end of the day a lot of times you know, it's hard when you accomplish, I mean, look what he's done. It's not even, there's nothing comparable. You could literally combine Cliff and I, and still we don't have enough, the same, maybe Marty too, you know, and, and you go through, through these moments in life, you know, where we're at, and where he's at in a career, which people can't understand. You know, it's easy for people to type and comment and, and be, you know, be negative and be positive and that's okay. You know, we don't mind. I mean, we even talked about it, right? People want to be negative. You could be negative, but there is a human side and, and it hurts. You know, you look in the mirror and you're like, man, look what I've done, you know, and, and what do I have? And that's not your fault. It's not, it's not, it's the sport we chose, you know, it's the, it's the path that we took. Um, you know, some others have, have seen it early and maybe went and chose a different path and that's great and good for them. And hopefully it's successful, but you know, Kane loves the sport. I love the sport. I'm still here. You know, we saw Cliff Swain last week. He loves the sport. But for some of us, it's our career. It's our living. And everything that happens matters. Everything 
we are super passionate about it. You know, a, a friend that I respect deeply said, I'll say it, Todd Boss. He said, you know, your passion just oozes out of you. And he understood. He said, it's because it's your livelihood. And when people make decisions, it affects you. It affects others. It doesn't just affect, you know, you individually. When it affects the sport, it affects a few of us individually. And, uh, you know, we appreciate that because a lot of people don't see that. And, and today with social media, there's just so much wrong, so much not true. But, you know, everybody that goes on social media, thank you. You know, really, we, we love it. We love to be able to interact with you. But that doesn't mean sometimes it doesn't suck, <laughs> you know, like this situation. Mm -hmm. This situation sucks. Sucks for the sport. It sucks for the fans. Uh, it sucks for the players. It sucks for the IRT. It sucks for USA Racquetball, LPRT. It's just a, it's a sucky thing, you know, and, and it's unfortunate. But hopefully we learn from it. You know, we all could learn from it. Uh, hopefully it could, it could be prevented somehow in the future. Um, you know, it sucks. I've gotten to know Kane here so well over the past year. And he's, he's really a good person. You know, he's one of the most loyal people I know. And I could tell you that decision for him was not easy. And it's hard to articulate exactly why. You know, a lot of people want to know why, 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 why. And at the end of the day, is it going to be good enough? You know, no matter what he says, is there a good enough answer if it isn't, you know, somebody slapped him in the face? I thought it was professional of him that he didn't mention specific names from the IRT that he could have. You know, maybe it's unfortunate because there are some that don't need to be mentioned, you know, like it's not this person. But I thought that was pretty cool, too. You know, he could have mentioned a lot of names, which he didn't. And he chose to do that. Um, you know, I think that with time, everything will be all right. Uh, you know, it's it affects everybody. Hopefully, if nothing else, it opens some eyes. It creates some dialogue, which it has. And and, you know, it's not a general IRT is a problem message. I think it's, you know, like many other organizations that I'm kind of vocal about that I think can do better mm -hmm. things that can help the sport. And, and if this is one of those crappy things that had to happen, that will pass, you know, and, and hopefully it doesn't get worse and snowball into a bigger, more of a problem. Um, you know, if, if it helps our sport in the long run, that's what matters, you know, because people are going to like and dislike Kane or, or me or you, no matter what, right? Nothing you can right. say or do. They're going to like you. They're going to hate you. It doesn't matter what you say or do. And everybody knows that everybody has the answer. And, and that's just not the way it is. But there's a lot of pressure, you know, being on the top, you know, looking in the mirror going, man, look what I've done, you know, and you get all these titles and accolades and like this little bit of money for a little bit of time. But then you go, man, all right. And no, it's not about how much did you invest? How much did you do this? How much did you do that? It's not comparable. <laughs> you know, we, it, it, it's totally different. And don't try to compare. Sorry. Because you just don't know. You just don't. And, you know, we can't explain every single detail from start to finish. Um, this isn't about bashing the IRT or, or the owners. You know, I think Kane, Kane personally is dealing with a lot of crappy stuff, um, just like I have had to, like Cliff has had to, like many great champions and great players have had to, and many future will. You know, but we got to continue to strive to do the best we can. Uh, I don't think it's going to be the last we see of Kane. Definitely not if I have any say of that. You know, the sport's better with him. We'll do that. You know, and Kane said his job is to win, right? He said that early on. He said he, he yeah. and, you know, Kane, nobody's done that better. Nobody's done it better than you, you know? So uh, you definitely did your job. And uh, we'll continue to do the best we can to promote the sport, energize it, love it, keep it growing, keep people interested. And we definitely need you to be part of that. I love the message. I love everything. Um, I just want to say before we go, uh, in summary that I get it, uh, how people like to get on the internet and say certain things. So after seeing Kane tonight, just remember he's human. Um, he said it, he's got four kids. He's no different than you or I, or anyone else out there. So just keep that in mind. You know, he is a human being. He is one of us. You know, if you love racquetball as much as you say you love it, you eat, you sleep, you breathe it, just like all of us do, just like we all just got back. Either if you went to the U.S. Open or you watched it all week, you're one of us and you're supposed to be like family. And I know family argues from time to time, but, you know, um, in the end, it should be all about love. We all need to love each other like brothers and sisters. And um, just think about that sometimes when you're out there thinking about spreading a negative message or making up a false a rumor or a lie 
So, you know, it was very humanizing for me tonight and very touching. Um, I've been playing racquetball as, as long as that kid. And I, and I call Kane a kid because I knew him, you know, before he was Kane. Before he was winning. And I, I can't imagine being treated like that. You know, I worked for a guy named Bob Stollins for 16 years. That guy never said no to me for racquetball, never, you know? And I can't imagine Bob treating me the way that someone may have treated Kane. And so for that, I'm sorry that, you know, somebody had to go through that, but you know, I can't imagine walking away from the sport and I would never let anybody push me away from that ball, ever. So thank you for letting me be on the show tonight. Uh, it was very emotional, as you can tell, for all of us. And uh, I hope that's not the last that we see from Kane. Yeah, it won't be. You know, it, he'll, we have experiences going on. Obviously, we're, you know, we're doing another one in January, which is pretty awesome. And uh, he, he loves it. You know, he, he finds a lot of love in that. You know, and it's, yeah, it's tough, Leo. I mean, that emotion that you're putting out is probably a little bit of knowing also, you know, the accomplishments or, or, or where our sport is at. You know, we're in, a, we're in a really important stage. You know, what happened with COVID was really, some will say a death blow, but I think there's some people out there doing the best, um, the best we can to, to continue it, to keep it going, keep it going strong. You know, unfortunately, take some money sometimes. Uh, but we definitely don't, you know, we don't want to lose the greatest player of all time for, for some differences, you know, and hopefully the IRT, I'm sure they'll respond and, and they should, um, whether they like what they saw or didn't like what they saw, at least they saw it, you know, and at least, you know, they can discuss it and maybe they can look in the mirror and go, yeah, we can do things better because nobody's doing anything perfect. You know, Kane knows he's not doing it perfect. We're not doing it perfect. Um, but yeah, the, the sport needs all the help we can get. And um, it's important, you know, we need, we need the fans. Uh, it's, it's not always perfect. <laughs> we know that it's okay to be against, but like, you know, the, the, the big message is, you know, let's, let's figure it out. Not forget that we all are racquetball, not to be cliche, but we are racquetball. And uh, that's what, that's what we're trying to do. So Leo, I just want to say, you know, thank you to you. Um, you know, it's, it wasn't an easy, easy show to take on. You know, I called you and said, hey, would you do this? Because I certainly didn't want to be the person doing the interview. Uh, I felt it needed to come from elsewhere because of my, you know, close knowledge. Um, and that's it. You know, I, I got to thank Scotty Mack, man. Thanks to you, you know, in the background doing this as always. And for the crappy position that you were put into, uh, you shouldn't have to be put into that position either. And, and no, it's, it's not personal, you know, IRT, it's not, it's not personal, you know, um, hopefully we just can all move on and get better from this um, to the fans, the sport, love you all without you. We're meaningless. You don't care. You can't talk good or bad about us. You know, for some of us, it's our livelihood and, and just tell us what more can we do? And, and I'm all for it, you know, keep, keep going at it. Of course, you know, to the person for me that keeps me going, Leo, without Veronica's love and support uh, and her constant, you know, passion for the sport to continue to play and now want to compete again, uh, I'm probably not even here. You know, I'm building my resume and finding a job and I'd be like, love you, racquetball. You know, you've taken so much from me, racquetball, but you've certainly given me the greatest things in my life. And for that, I thank you. And uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Have a good night, night everybody. Everyone.